So I was uh, challenged by Petra to talk a little bit about SMI in the second trimester. I will show you the results of our work in the first trimester. And because the project on the second trimester are to start yet, I will show a little bit on, uh, about the possibilities and what we are going to look. And then, if I'm not mistaken, afterwards we are going to do a live scan on a second trimester uh, baby. So, what is SMI? That's what I always start. And this is a very, it looks very technical, but that's actually very silly. It's my way of explaining things. So when you have a uh, Doppler signal, you always have a little bit of noise and whatever the, the engineers call that, I call noise. And in order for you to see the Doppler signal that we have, uh, the machine and the, uh, the tools they put there, they cut the noise, but you lose a little bit of the Doppler signal as well. Um, SMI is the sort of the same signal as we have for any other high-definition Doppler, but the way it reads, it's differently. It uh, eliminates better the noise and everything else that is not uh, pure Doppler, and you are left uh, with the Doppler, and then you can see slow, uh, the, the slower flow, the uh, low impedance flow. Uh, it was, as Petra said, firstly uh, created to, to assess liver, and all the other things that we don't care about. Um, and then we thought of looking at the heart. And why the heart? Uh, because fetal heart, is, well, fetal heart abnormalities are one of the most, are actually the most common uh, structure abnormality. And, is, and the big abnormalities are the least detected. These are data from the EuroCAT, uh, the most recent data until 2015. And you can see comparing, even though from 2011 to 2015, you increase quite a lot the detection rate for uh, ma a, ma a major cardiac abnormality as transposition of great artery is still one of the least detectors. And this, is a, this represents detection of cardiac abnormalities in any gestation, in any uh, gestational age. So there is a, a, a role here to play to, to improve our detection rate of cardiac abnormalities or even so to make easier or to uh, facilitate our visualization of the cardiac structure, and that's our aim. So we start looking in the first trimester, a similar um, protocol as we have in the second trimester, where you in every patient we look at the four chambers view, look at the AV valve, the interventricular septum, the position, uh, the proportion of the two sides, and then we move to the outflow tracts and we see uh, left outflow tract, a cl clear connection between the left uh, ventricle with the aorta, pulmonary arteries where, where you actually have to see the branching of the pulmonary arteries, and, and the three vessels where you actually see the three vessels, pulmonary artery, aorta, and superior vena cava. And then we actually, the study of done that was uh, accepted for publication now, and the other two we just submitted last week, it's a simple comparison between what we can see when we use B-mode and high-definition Doppler in comparison on what we can see when we use SMI. So this is uh, what we found. For, 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 for chamber view, we, we didn't see much of a change because in most cases, about 99% of the cases, we are able to assess properly the four chamber view without any uh, aid, without any Doppler anyway. But when you go for the outflow tracts, we can see a clearly connection between the aorta and the left ventricle uh, when you are using B mode and high definition Doppler in 71% of the case. Uh, for pulmonary artery, you can see the branching of the pulmonary artery clearly uh, in 65% of the case when you are using only B mode and, and high definition Doppler. The three vessel view we see in about 88% of the case, mainly because most of the times we say, we say, we tell ourselves, that we have a three-vessel view, we're actually seeing two vessels, either because the flow here is so slow that it's different from, in the first trimester, it's much different in the superior vena cava than from the other um, uh, arteries that you don't see the vessel, or when you see the vessel, you have an overflow, and then the, the, visualis the, the, the superior vena cava and the aorta, they just merge together because of the overflow. So you see, a proper three-vessel view where you can differentiate the three vessels in 88% of the time in the first trimester. The use of SMI improves the visualization of all these um, all these structures. Um, didn't improve much in the four-chamber view. 
one note here. When we started the study, as Petra said, we didn't really know where we were looking at. Uh, we didn't know the potential of the SMI, so we didn't really take a full consideration of the visualization on the interventricular septum and the pulmonary veins. That's something that uh, Dr. Masood will, will talk about in the next lecture. So that's why we didn't say when you're looking at proportion, size, uh, and position, it didn't change the use of SMI, but it changed a lot when you go for the, the, um, the, the outflow track. So you, we increased to 95, 94%, the clear visualization and connection between the aorta and the, the, right, the left ventricle you increase to 91% of the times the visualization of the pulmonary artery with the branching of the pulmonary artery, which is important, you all know, because this is what makes the pulmonary artery the pulmonary artery. And the clear visualization of the three vessels where you can actually see the superior vena cava as an independent vessel from the, from the aorta, we increase from 90, 88 to 98%. It not only helps you to see um, the, this structure, but when we looking at all this section in one patient, this is the, the, the percentage of time we can see all this section in one single patient, about 81% of the time. But when you include SMI, it goes to about 96%. So it helps you to see better. It's, it helps you to see in the first trimester to see um, the whole structure in one, in one single patient more often. And Last but not least, it also helps you to see in most difficult uh, situations. So we all know that depth it's, uh, increases our difficulty, yes. So this is the main distance from the probe to the heart where you can see all these structures in one single patient, yes. So when you use B-mode and color Doppler, we manage to, the, the main distance is about seven centimeters. When you use SMI, this distance, it can be either because of uh, fat tissue or because of the uh, retroverted uterus or because of any other thing, but this distance in increases to 86%. So it helps you to see the structures better in the first trimester. It uh, helps you to, to, to assess the whole heart uh, more often in, this, in the first trimester, and it, act it also helps you to see the heart in, in, the, in most difficult situations. Um, so, this is how it goes. This is a first trimester view of the heart. This is a sweep. This is just a slower so you can see the details be better. You can very clearly see the interventricular septum, the, the, the aorta, the pulmonary artery is going to come here at any minute with the branching there, we saw there, and then the three vessels. We actually can see there the superior vena cava. So, and what about the second trimester? Second trimester, um, we had a problem in the past, not a problem, there was a limitation of the technique in the past years because you, you, there was a need for the, for the SMI to work well, work well. We needed a very small window here, the, the Doppler window, the, the, co the color box. But with the new uh, ISMI, we, uh, the, the ability to, to assess a larger area improves. And although we're still working on some of the presets, it in increased a lot the, the visualization of the heart in the, in the second trimester. Of course, you can see the heart clearly without any Doppler, but there are some details that become very clearly and easily seen in the second trimester, and this is what we are going to study. You can see here, those, these are the two, uh, the actually, uh, you know, the, these are, they look very similar, but they're two different babies. They are both around, uh, 20 weeks. They, uh, um, it works well at 20 weeks. It works also good at 21 to 22 weeks. And then when you move to 23 onwards, you need, a, um, you need to have a smaller box again. So we can see very clear the interventricular septum. Again, you can very clearly see the, the, out, the left outflow tract and the periventricular um, uh, septum, part of the ventricular septum. You can easily see there the 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 the, the, veno, the, the pulmonary veins uh, and if you pay attention but I'm not going to focus on this here now you you will be able to see the valves when it closes especially when you're using the 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 cine loop but I will try to show you in a minute so our study that we are going to start um, we will focus on the things I told you so we hope that SMI in the second trimester will help you to assess the interventricular septum better. So you can find easily, uh, not, I'm not talking about 
major abnormalities like AVSD, of course, you don't need Doppler for that. But small muscular um, de defects, you will be able, even the bigger ones that sometimes it's tricky depending on the color, the position, you have so many pitfalls and so many uh, problems that this makes very easy for you to see. And most important, a part of the heart that I personally consider sometimes difficult to assess the periventricular septum, it just shows very easily and very clearly. And because SMI doesn't really rely, it, there is, it is a Doppler and there is an importance on the uh, insonation angle, but SMI doesn't, doesn't, doesn't bother very much the insonation angle. There is some effect, but not much. You can even see the interventricular septum and the perimembranous part of the interventricular septum uh, clearly, in, even in positions, as you can see here, that would be very difficult to see in, uh, with color Doppler or even with, uh, uh, with B-mode when the baby's in this kind of position. So we hope that helps to see better these structures, but not also make your time for a scan in an anomaly scan shorten because you don't, need, you don't rely very much on the position of the fetus to see the structures you need to see. And another thing that is very clear, you saw in the video, the next video also shows easily, is the clear visualization of the pulmonary veins. Uh, this picture doesn't really show very much, but you can, really, you can clearly see that. And we hope that it is possible to, to assess the pulmonary veins easier and can find uh, pulmonary veins abnormalities more uh, easier. So this is what I hope next year we are going to come and show you data on that. And this is what I hope that SMI will play an important role uh, for assessing heart in the second trimester. So I think uh, we will see now, thank you very much. Uh, we will see now, um, I will do a live scan now or is that the end? Now, yeah, okay. And let's hope for the best. Um, so we move here to a uh, heart. <coughs> so there is the baby. Okay, good. So you can see the baby is, uh, how many weeks? 17. 17 weeks. Mm -hmm. 17 so the baby is 17 weeks. Uh, 20 weeks would be nicer to show you, but okay, you can see. So we will switch on the SMI. We will play a little bit here because, of course, Mika didn't put the right presets on, um, so we need to play here a little bit with the presets. And then you can see, because we have, you always have uh, some, we're still working on that, we still, we always have, can I have, we, we still have this uh, sort of noise. But if you focus on what we are talking about, and here CineLoop works very nicely, yes, you can clearly see here the interventricular septum, uh, and there. You see the aorta. You can see here the the, the perimembranos. Um, let me just go back here. Yeah. Uh, can we increase there? Yeah. Okay. So septum. We are on an upright position, right uh, angle, not in a right angle to the septum, and you can see the septum very well. So you don't really need to go uh, at the right angle to the septum to see that. And just a normal sweep without any other thing. Of course, here the baby is uh, helping me now. But just a normal sweep when we move to the outflow tracts, you can clearly see that there is no connection here, no communication in the perimembranous part of the, of the, um, of the, 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 the ventricle. The, the, the pulmonary artery, you don't really need the SMI. It doesn't really help much. Uh, the part I want to focus is exactly that, and then the baby is perfect for that. And you can see here, I'm in a, in a high frequency for the SMI, and without even doing anything special, you can start seeing here the, the pulmonary veins, the return of the pulmonary veins. We still don't have direction for the for, for information in direction, uh, but you can see that very clearly. Um, you, if you change to other position, you can also explore Oh, uh, yeah, you can all explore the inferior vena cava. That's something that Dr. Julian is going to show you. Twin view? No, I don't really like that. Okay, but that's okay. You can see that very clearly. Okay. Um, so what I wanted to show here today, it's the, um, that, uh, the, the clear visualization of the interventricular septum where you don't really need to, we see that in, a, in a one go. We have seen the, 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 um, the baby in the four chamber view and 
and then you can directly see the ventricular sept without any communication. Um, yeah, there you go. Cine loop here works very well because exactly because still because of the noise we have and the presets we're still working on. Um, Cine loop helps you to to assess better, so you can go back slowly and see. Uh, everything interesting here that you can see when the valves are closed, you can see very clearly. You, you even see the offsets of the uh, of the, the the two AV valves very easily and very clearly. Um, do you want? Do you have any question? Any further questions from your side? There you go. Okay, one more question. And uh, <clears throat> Thank you. Sorry, David Howe from Southampton again. How much is this affected by obesity? Sorry? How much does, How much does obesity affect the image? Affect by what? Obesity. Uh, that's one thing. I mean, I don't know for second trimester yet, but what we've seen for first trimester, it's the, 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 there are some effects, of course, but much less than any other Doppler. Because well, I don't know if you remember that one of the last slides, we, we have seen there the distance from the probe to the to the heart, for us to to see all the all the sections we have to see to analyze the heart in the first trimester, increased from 70% 70, percent, 70 uh, millimeters when you are not using SMI to to 86 millimeters when you are using SMI. So there is of course a, an effect, but not it is it is much less than you can have uh, with any other Doppler. There you have, again, the interventricular septum, the perimembranous septum. And there, you know. So it's, if you can see here, if I move down, you have liver and you have all the vessels there. So it's really nice to see other things. But for heart, that is it. Thank you very much for your time.